Hi, this is Mark at Ding Dong's Garden, and I just wanted to continue on our previous video and cover a few more types of mulberry trees we have. And this is uh, Rupp's Romanian. We've propagated quite a few of these, and the fruit size looks pretty good. We had a little bit last year, but not too much, so we're looking forward to seeing how this fruits and what kind of quantity we can get out of it. This is a uh, Girardi dwarf. Uh, it, it doesn't grow fast, but it does produce a lot of fruit. And we haven't had any luck uh, propagating this by rooting yet, but we're going to keep trying. So we'll try again next year. We learned a lot of lessons about how to root mulberries this year, and we'll, we'll try to apply those and see if we can cut, find some new ways to do it. This is our uh, Noir de Spain, Noir de Spain, and uh, it doesn't fruit a lot. It's a uh, Morris Nigra. Uh, it's very pretty, very slow growing. We have two other varieties I'll show you, but my understanding is that uh, all of these are genetically identical. They just, uh, they just carry different names, but uh, we have them and they, they do, they look identical. So this is one of our other Morris Nigras. Uh, it, we've never been able to root a Morris Nigra. Perhaps there, maybe we can do it someday. Took a little bit of cold damage last year. We're, we have a very mild climate here, so the lows were only in the uh, low 20s at the, at the worst for only a few days, but uh, this suffered a little bit of damage. And this is the last of our three Morris Nigras. And we bought this under the name of Persian. And it uh, it's a little slow growing. And I think it also took a little damage, cold damage this winter. This is our contorted mulberry. Well, we have two contorted mulberries. And this is, this is the one that gave us male flowers this year. It's hard to see the contortions. It's a very slight contortion. It's not like some of the crazy curly willows we have. Uh, but once the it, once the foliage drops off, you can kind of see the shape that the uh, the stems form. And this is Callie's delight. It's the other contorted mulberry we have, and it's uh, it sets fruit. It'll set uh, tiny, tasty fruit, um, and also gives you this uh, contortion in the in the branches, which is uh, it's kind of a corkscrew pattern. It's not really. Uh, too dramatic a twist in the stems, but uh, it still makes for a pretty tree. This is our boysenberry mulberry, not to be confused with a boysenberry the berry. It's just the name of it. Uh, it's pretty fast growing. It's, uh, it's our second year with uh, growing this, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, what the what the fruit looks like and uh, and how well it does. Uh, this is El Illinois Everbearing. Uh, it's a very popular tree for good reason. The fruit tastes great and it fruits over a long period. We've uh, propagated quite a few of these, probably eight or nine, and we're gonna set them out in our orchard just because it's a reliable tree and uh, pretty cold hardy. This is Northrop. It's supposedly very cold hardy uh, and it still puts off fruit. The fruit is a little small. We'll see how it tastes, but I'm not sure if for, for our uses here, if, if the fruit is too small, we may not choose to put a lot of them in our orchard, but uh, it's a great option if you live in a, in a cold weather climate. And another tree here that has small fruit, but is uh, probably still pretty cold hardy is our uh, Riv Riverview Russian. So we'll see how, how this does this year. It certainly grows a lot. It puts out a lot of stems. So we'll f try and figure out how we're going to prune this. And we haven't tried to propagate it yet, but we will, we will certainly do that this winter. And this is Wakissa. Uh, this was out in the field and we decided to 
to pull it back up out of the ground and uh, put it in a pot and bring it here. And it loves the heat. It survived out there. It just didn't thrive like it's doing now. Uh, so we'll see uh, see how it does in here. And uh, again, we'll try to propagate this next year. We, we haven't had a chance to try and propagate it yet. And this is our maple leaf mulberry. We have a few of them. And I'd, what I'd like to show you is what uh, heat can do for growth of a mulberry. This uh, spent the winter outdoors in a pot. And we brought it in here. Uh, into the hoop house area and we put the plastic over the hoop house in April. So it's been growing in here in the heat for about a month. And here's another maple leaf uh, mulberry. Some of the leaves don't have the, mulberry, the maple leaf shape, but uh, the fruit is right. The fruit on a maple leaf mulberry is uh, cylindrical. And this has been in here uh, about two weeks. So the branch development is less, it's less leafed out. So that's about two weeks of uh, in the heat. And finally we'll go outside. And here we're out in our orchard. And this is uh, another maple leaf mulberry. And you can just tell it's, it's starting to leaf out, but it just doesn't have the same vigor as the maple leaf mulberries and all the other mulberries that we have in the hoop house. So those mulberries, they just love heat.